Hello, 8th graders! Ms. Esther here, bringing to you a brand new English lesson. This is a such a unique moment we are living, but I'm here for you, okay? I want to help you in these transitions from our face-to-face -to, -face to our online classes. I know it can be hard, so stay tuned, because I have some tips that may help you to be productive during this time, to enjoy this process, and also benefit the most you can from this moment that, that we are living. Tip number one, we are not on vacation, so organize a structured routine so you don't get yourself drowning in so many things to do at once. Tip number two, organize the place you will study. Nobody likes to study in a messy place, right? So prepare a material, prepare the activities that you can print, prepare the room, okay organize everything so you can be stimulated by every little thing around you and make sure that you will not get distracted so facebook instagram whatsapp put all those all those things away while you are studying okay that way you will do a lot of things in a shorter period of time and then you have enough time later to do whatever you like Tip number three, when you are not studying, try to amuse yourself. Do things that you really like. For example, play with your dog, dance to your favorite song, play games with your family, whatever makes you happy. That way you'll be relaxed and recharged once you need to get back to your studies. So this is it. Are you ready for our lesson today? All right, grab your pens, your notebook, and get ready to take some notes. Okay, guys, in our last lesson, we started a discussion about linguistic variation, right? But what is it exactly? Yeah, I know you know the answer. So, linguistic variation refers to the different ways that a particular language can be used. Okay. I remember we had a very funny discussion about the word cookie and its correct translation to the Portuguese language. Is it cookie or is it biscoito? Okay, we also learned that the language can vary according to the location we live, according to our age, according to our social class, according to our gender, according to the context we are, and according to our ethnicity. Today, we're going to focus on the location we are. More specifically, we're going to talk about the differences, the linguist differences between Brazil and Portugal, okay? First, let's talk about the about pronunciation, okay? Let's start with the letter D. Uh, the letter D can sound really different when combined uh, with the letter D, like in the word vontade. As I said, in, in Brazil we say vontade. But in Portugal, it will not sound J. It will sound something like D. Vontade. You see the difference? J. D. Pay attention to this uh, scene here. Eu também estou aqui contra minha vontade. You see? Okay, another letter that can sound very different is the letter T. Okay, it's basically, uh, it's quite similar to the letter D. Pay attention to this, uh, these two tracks here. Could you spot the difference? Noite, 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 noite. That is so cool. Another difference between the Brazilian and European Portuguese is the vocabulary. Okay, take a look at. Go back, yeah. Take a look at these scenes. So, we say 
hatu. They say ratazanas. Okay, okay, I know. We say hatazanas, hatazana as well, but it's not that common. Okay? Uh, and the word place, we say lugar. And they say sitio. Sitio for us, it is another thing. It's the place we go on the weekends, right? To relax, ride some horses. All right. And guys, there are many other words that we can add to this list. Okay. Further, we're going to see some of them. Last but not least is the sentence is structure and this example that i'm gonna show you here guys really stands out from all the others okay uh we have a case of uh infinitive versus gerund first before we discuss it i want you to read this uh sentence here Okay, the woman is telling something to the guy, so I want you to read that. I'm going to give you some seconds. Done? Okay, I'm going to read it then. Estás a ouvir? Acabei de dizer que a minha mãe vem passar o mês conosco, que os miúdos foram para a discoteca e que o teu carro, carro, Está arder. How different is that from our Portuguese, right? So, can you spot the infinitive case here? Yeah, that's correct. Estás a ouvir? Está a arder. In, in, Port in the Brazilian Portuguese, we would say, Você está me ouvindo? In the gerund form, okay? The carro está fervendo, something like that. And this, this as, a, as I mentioned to you, this example really stands out. If you notice, um, in um, if you watch an interview or maybe a movie, you will spot that right away. This one, guys, is one of the biggest linguistic differences between Brazil and Portugal. Which one do you prefer? Let's see now a few more examples. Please keep taking notes. Here we go. Olá. Oi. The first difference between Portuguese from Portugal and Portuguese from Brazil is that Portuguese people tend to speak with their mouth more closed. And Brazilian people tend to speak with their mouth more wide open. Uh, obviamente, a parte dos aeroportos e das viagens, eu já estou cansadíssima. E normalmente os aviões estão sempre apanhados às, às 5 da manhã. Tem que ir às 5 da manhã sempre para o aeroporto. Zé, me dá uma volta nas redes quentes, tira foto, vai, vídeo, bota no Instagram. Aí eu pô, que massa! Aí eu dou um rolê na volta, obrigada, aí pede quando você precisa. Não, tá ótimo. Another difference is the S sound. So people from Portugal tend to pronounce the S in many cases, especially when the S comes at the end of a word, as a SH sound, like shh. And in Brazil, people tend to pronounce the S sound in many cases as s. So, but there are exceptions to this rule. For example, people from Rio tend to pronounce the S at the end of words as a sh sound, like in Portugal. But a good example to see this difference is the word Portuguese. So people from Portugal pronounce the word Portuguese as Portuguese. And in Brazil, people usually pronounce the word as Portuguese. Eu falo Portuguese. Eu falo Portuguese. The third difference refers to the use of the second person pronoun in the singular form. So, in Portugal, they use the pronoun tu, and in Brazil, we use the pronoun você. In Portugal, the pronoun você is very formal. It's a formal way to say tu, but in Brazil, we use você all the time. It's not formal at all. If you want to sound a little bit more formal in Brazil, you should say something like you sir, like o senhor. But there are also exceptions to this rule. In some states in the south of Brazil and in the northeast of Brazil, 
Some people use the pronoun tu also, but in most parts of Brazil we use the pronoun você. Tu falas português? Você fala português? There are also many, many differences in vocabulary between Portuguese from Portugal and Portuguese from Brazil. One of these differences is the word bicha. So the word bicha in Portugal means lying. And in Brazil, the word bicha is a pejorative way to say homosexual. And if you want to say lying in Brazil, the word is fila. That's wonderful, isn't it? To see how much a, a language can change just because we live in, in different places. And imagine if we add all the other types of linguistic variations. Wow. Okay, before we finish this class today, guys, I have two tasks for you. The first one is to take this task okay no this uh research that we are doing further okay i want you to go online and using your cell phone or computer try to find more differences between the european and the brazilian portuguese language okay uh and after you find more differences it can be related to vocabulary pronunciation or even uh, sentence structure, you will do the second task. And the second task is a video react. Let's read here these instructions so you can understand what it is exactly. Okay, so first you need to choose one movie you like a lot. Then you must choose one scene of the movie. You need to find the European and the Brazilian Portuguese version of it, okay? So you must find the two versions of it. You must watch it in, uh, in, in English, then you're gonna switch, you know, and then you're gonna watch in Portuguese, but in the Brazilian and in the European version. So you need to have the two versions downloaded or you can watch it online you, you your choice okay miss i chose the movie i chose the same the scene and i i found the two versions of it what do i need to do now okay first you must set a camera that will record you while you watch the videos while you were watching the video okay so you can ask help for your mom your i don't know someone uh from your family okay uh you can use your cell phone to do it so here for example i am uh in front of the computer okay so someone could be here with the cell phone rec recording me and the computer at the same time Okay, so you need to decide who, how are you going to do it? You, or maybe you don't need to have someone recording. You can have like a place somewhere, okay? It can be this way as well. Uh, so you have the camera and then you press play. What you will do? You first will explain what you will do. Yeah? Uh, you're gonna look at the camera and say, okay guys, today, I'm going to do a video reaction comparing uh, this the scene one scene from the movie this movie okay I'm gonna watch the Brazilian version and then the Portuguese version of it and compare two versions okay so you need to explain what you will do in the video and then you will click play on the vi uh, on the video that is on your computer okay play and then you watch the first part of it okay you watch the first video you pause it and then you can make some comments you can comment make comments about uh how cool is the character in the scene or how cool is the movie 
okay about the colors about their accent whatever you want okay this first moment i want to just comment about the movie itself okay and then you're gonna watch the second video okay the other version ah uh, then you you press play and watch it okay you watch da -da 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 -da, pause it and then you're gonna make comments comparing the two videos okay you can make um uh, talk about uh how different are the pronunciations of some words how different are the vocabularies or the sentence structure and you can give examples specific examples that will be very good if you do it um after you record after you finish you know make uh making this comment and everything else you will just stop recording yourself and this video that you have here okay you will upload okay to your google drive and then share with Mrs. Esther. Me. Okay. I typed my email here. And please share with me. So, guys, this is it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you are all fine. Okay. Please take care of yourself. I miss you a lot. You have no idea. So, guys. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I'll be. You can reach me on Google Classroom, on Google Hangouts as well. Let me know if you need me.